Hi, I'm Harry Coffey, an Army civilian working at the U.S. Army Medical Research and Materiel Command located here at Fort Detrick, Maryland. I am delighted that you are watching this briefing because it means you are part of this very special and unique organization. We have over 7,000 employees at MRMC. We work here as a single team for the well-being of warfighters and the warfighting family. Now this is an Army command, but it often looks tri-service, and we have other services represented at many levels throughout the organization. We are a full life cycle command. We do it all from the beginning to the end. This is what makes us strong. This makes us Army strong. Six of us will be speaking to you today. We will show you how each of us, including you, contribute to making the Army strong. person at MRMC is Army Strong. We support the medic in combat, the warfighter, and the warfighter family. We are not only Army Strong, our strength has an impact and a presence across the globe. Did you know that we have a presence on five of the seven continents? Each and every one of you, each person watching this brief, is part of a team that spans the globe. We have six Army Medical Research Laboratories, RID, RARE, ISR, USARIUM, USARIL, and MRICD. Now these are acronyms, and you're going to get to know each one of these as we go through the brief. We have three medical research detachments and four overseas laboratories, but nothing works without acquisition and logistics. We have the U.S. Army Medical Material Development Activity, the U.S. Army Medical Material Agency, the U.S. Army Medical Material Centers in Europe and Korea, and we're not done yet. We have forward sites for the pre-positioned medical material and maintenance divisions to support acquisition, fielding, and the sustainment of medical equipment. We have executive agencies. 
the Armed Forces Medical Examiner, the National Museum of Health and Medicine, and the Defense Center of Excellence for TBI and Psych Health. The mission of our command sets the tone for why we are here and for whom we direct all of our efforts. We are responsive. When we have a capability gap, we fill that gap with a new capability. It could be solving the problem of non-compressible hemorrhaging or an effective vaccine for malaria or leishmaniasis. It could be getting the right supplies and equipment to the combat support hospitals where lives are saved and lost in a continuous critical environment. And we are responsible. You and I are responsible. You and I are hired to support the warfighter. That's what we do. We're creative, innovative, we develop solutions, and we sustain medical capabilities for the warfighter. Our vision is clear. Lead the advancement of military medicine. No one else is going to do this. This is a task that rests clearly on our shoulders. Let's talk about diversity. This means we're talking about our people. Like many large organizations, we have an incredible mix of people who have an endless array of talent and skills, each able to fit into a huge, complex organization called MRMC. Each day we walk next to people who have made some of the great discoveries in medicine. Everyone contributes. Everyone. Each person matters, and we need each and every one of you in order to be successful. Let's begin with our partnerships. This is one of our great strengths. Our partnerships fall into three general areas, government, academia, and industry. In government, we partner with organizations like NIH, the Veterans Administration, Navy and Air Force, for academia, major universities who are performing cutting-edge research like Duke, Maryland, MIT, UCLA, the list is endless, and industry. These are partners who will commercialize our inventions. They want to partner with us. We do the heavy lifting. We take the chances. And this works because we are responsive, responsible, and trusted. Our full life cycle command requires a broad spectrum of work that spans the fields of science, administration, logistics, acquisition, contracting, personnel, safety, security, information technology, and the list goes on. This requirement for diversity allows us to hire experts in many fields and bring them together for a single purpose, the well-being of our warfighters and the warfighting family. We're a powerhouse of collaboration that spans the entire life cycle. Our collaboration starts inside the command and reaches out to the community. MRMC is a threat-driven organization. Everything we do is centered on the warfighter and eliminating medical threats. There are seven categories of threats that affect our service members. Now, the threats of today are not totally unique from the threats of earlier wars, but the details evolve with change in weapons and geographic and climatic environments in which the military operates and the development of drug resistance disease organisms. MRMC made major advances in providing medical knowledge and technology to address this diverse spectrum of threats, but our mission is far from complete. Significant occupational, operational, and environmental challenges to the sustainment of soldier health and performance remain. The partial solutions of the past can be improved. Our job your job is not done. We cannot be certain in our projections of the challenges of the future, but we must be prepared to respond to them. Military invests in an internal laboratory system and basic research in order to provide the knowledge and technology base that can facilitate solving those future problems. They depend on us to invent capabilities that no one has yet envisioned in order to maintain technological superiority needed to rapidly respond to future threats and to give our warfighters a competitive edge in health and performance. The requirement to prepare for an uncertain future is the foundation of the science and technology mission of our laboratories. But that is not the only requirement that guides the science and technology investments we manage and the research we perform. 
From threats, we move to requirements and the joint capabilities, integration, and development systems called JSIDs. Once the threat is identified, the combat developer identifies the capability gaps and then documents this requirement. And this whole process allows us to prioritize our programs. It's a true test of how well we respond to user needs. But the real test is in execution. You will see this model at the bottom several times throughout the day. This is the acquisition roadmap that brings us through early research all the way to when we get it out to the field for use. MRMC is truly customer focused. The warfighter's well-being is worth every penny that comes to this command. We deliver both medical knowledge products and medical material products. We do this through three integrated programs that allow for transitions through the life cycle. There's research and development, development and acquisition, and finally acquisition and logistics. These programs actually blend seamlessly one into the other. Now complementing these three programs, we have three special programs. Congressional special interests with targeted outcomes. The Armed Forces Medical Examiner System looks at cause of death, identification of remains, and so forth. And the National Museum of Health and Medicine, capturing the history of health and medicine and providing lessons from the past that help our understanding today. And this is also a great catalyst for future researchers and practitioners. Today we're going to introduce you to the life of a warfighter and show you how we at MRMC contribute to the health and welfare of each soldier, sailor, marine, and airman. We'll take you through the initial training of a recruit, how a warfighter prepares for deployment, and how we care for them even after deployment. Each step of the way, we will show you how we have contributed and continue to support our warfighters with innovative solutions. With each solution, we'll introduce you to the various commands, the ones that did the heavy lifting and turned good ideas into products that save lives. Our global reach is impressive. We're about to look at the life of a soldier and see some examples of where we contribute to each warfighter and make the Army strong. I'd like to introduce you to my colleague and friend, Lieutenant Colonel Ray Laurel. He's a soldier. He's been downrange and has gone through the experiences of boot camp. He'll be your guide for this next portion of the MRMC orientation. Thank you. Good morning. I'll be teaming up with Dr. Keith Vesley on training and pre-deployment. First, let's take you to basic training so you can see firsthand who we support from the start. Sit back as we watch a day in the life of a new recruit. Have you ever wondered what it's like to go through basic training? There have been so many improvements today to enhance the process to turn civilians into soldiers. The making of a soldier starts with attention to uniform standards, drill and ceremony, military courtesy, and daily physical training. These are the fundamentals soldiers learn early that promote the Army values. The environment in basic training can be summed up simply as chaotic. Drill sergeants are barking out orders at a very fast pace while recruits try to keep up. It is here where the concept of the battle buddy is used. It is here where the recruit starts becoming a soldier learning early that they must work together. It is also here where recruits start their series of medical and dental screening requirements, requirements tested, evaluated, and optimized by the U.S. Army Medical Research and Materiel Command. 
Physical training, push-ups, sit-ups, two-mile run, obstacle courses, immunizations are all part of basic training and our command has a shared mission to establish these standards in building our nation's force. In support of the Army's mission to transform a civilian to a warfighter, we team up with other Army activities to produce training policy and guidelines that provide recommendations to enhance warfighter capabilities and reduce health risks. The objective of the medical process in bringing in new recruits is to screen out applicants who are medically unfit for service, and for those fit to serve, enhance individual performance. We in this command continue this coordinated effort by product and knowledge improvement for clothing, equipment, nutrition, pharmaceuticals, and other medical advances by providing design specifications to improve individual warfighter equipment, rations, and knowledge products. Keeping the promise, fulfill their trust, and no one left behind are several of many maxims that refer to the efforts of the Defense Department, otherwise known as DOD, to recover those who became missing while serving our nation. During medical in-processing, blood is taken from recruits to register their DNA. The DOD DNA registry is maintained by the Armed Forces Medical Examiner System, also known as AFMES. This registry enables the Casualty and Mortuary Affairs Mission to provide compassionate, unwavering support to the families of warfighters who have paid the ultimate price of our profession. This full accounting is in concert with upholding the war ethos and never leaving a fallen comrade behind. Operation Iraqi Freedom is the first U.S. conflict in which all personnel were accounted in large part of the ongoing science improvements and AFMEs. Medical in-processing is also a time to begin the process of protecting warfighters from the myriad of infectious diseases. Exposures range from the training environment to the deployed environment on the execution of their mission of serving our nation's interests across the globe. Many of these products owe their existence to the ideas and efforts of the Army, Navy, and Air Force researchers. As an example of the impact of these efforts and the complexity of making one of these products available to warfighters, we'll illustrate the development path for the newest vaccine in our inventory, the adenovirus types 4 and 7 vaccines. Adenoviruses, particularly serotype 4 and 7, are one of the primary causes of febrile respiratory disease, FRD. Adenovirus-related FRD is uniquely relevant to military recruit populations because it causes suffering, disrupts training, and consumes medical resources, often resulting in recruit recycling and sometimes proving fatal. Eight deaths were attributed to adenovirus infections in warfighters from 1999 to 2010. Since the program restarted combined data from the training installations of the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and Coast Guard, indicates that the vaccine has reduced the incidence of febrile respiratory illness by over 75% and essentially eliminating the threat posed by adenovirus types 4 and 7. So how do we get a product to the warfighter? Like all product development efforts in our command, the adenovirus program had to be managed in accordance with not only regulations from the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, but also those regulations, directives, and processes of the DOD acquisition system. And also, like all MRMC development efforts, it could not be successful without the input of many components of our command. The Integrated Product Team, the IPT, is a multidisciplinary group of people who are collectively responsible for delivering a defined product or process. The IPT for Adenovirus Vaccine brought together many elements of the command that included key offices from MRMC Headquarters, Walter Reed Army Institute of Research, Army Medical Material Development Activity, and Army Medical Research Acquisition Activity. The Walter Reed Army Institute of Research, RARE, located at Silver Spring, Maryland, was instrumental in the development of the adenovirus vaccine. RARE conducts biomedical research that is responsive to DOD and U.S. Army requirements and delivers life-saving products including knowledge, technology, and medical material that sustain the combat effectiveness of the warfighter. RARE focuses on research to advance prevention and treatment of warfighters for the adverse medical and operational consequences of combat stress, inadequate sleep, concussion, brain injury, infectious disease, and more through its Centers of Infectious Disease Research and Military Psychiatry and Neurosciences. Their special foreign activities include U.S. Army Medical Research Unit Kenya, located at Nairobi, Kenya, U.S. Army Medical Research Unit Europe, located in Germany, 
U.S. Army Medical Research Unit, Georgia, located at Tbilisi, Georgia, and Armed Forces Research Institute of Medical Sciences, located at Bangkok, Thailand. The U.S. Army Medical Material Development Activity, USAMDA, located at Fort Detrick, Maryland, in close coordination with RARE, was key in successfully navigating the adenovirus vaccine into development. USAMDA develops and manages medical material to protect and sustain the warfighter on point for the nation. USAMDA is the DOD's advanced medical material development activity for products designed to protect and preserve the lives of warfighters. They develop new drugs, vaccines, and medical devices that enhance readiness, ensures the provision of the highest quality of medical care to the DOD, and maximizes survival of medical casualties on the battlefield. The U.S. Army Medical Research Acquisition Activity, USAMRA, as part of the Integrated Product Team for Adenovirus Vaccine, closed this product development into a useful and effective combat multiplier for our warfighters so that they can continue their development in becoming the nation's finest military. USAMRA, also located at Fort Detrick, Maryland, is a contracting element of our command and provides support to the command headquarters and its worldwide network of laboratories and medical logistics organizations. The rapid pace of operations and the need for repeated deployments have a profound effect on the physiological and psychological health and performance of warfighters. The recruit schedule includes marksmanship training, grenadier training, drill and ceremony, gas chamber orientation, radio and signal communications, survival skills training, force road marches, combat and bayonet training, combatant hand-to-hand -hand training, and many, many more. Our command physiological health research focuses on developing medical standards, predictive models, and countermeasures to prevent or mitigate the effects of physiological stressors on the performance and fitness of warfighters. As you can see, the recruit's normal training schedule can be described as simply chaotic. Our command's Military Operational Medicine Research Program, also known as MAMRA, and the United States Army Research Institute of Environmental Medicine, also known as USARIUM, have been at the forefront providing information and input to training doctrine in an effort to reduce injuries to recruits during training. For example, when training in high temperatures, warfighters must learn to continually take in fluids to prevent dehydration and heat stroke. USARIUM has been instrumental in determining the appropriate regimens of fluid intake for basic training recruits. Another example to reduce heat injury perfected at USARIUM is the arm immersion kit as seen at the bottom left photo. It is simply a bathtub of water at 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Heat stressed warfighters immerse their arms in the device up to their elbows for up to three minutes. This preventative measure cools the warfighter down to safe level. The United States Army Research Institute of Environmental Medicine, USARIUM, located at Natick, Massachusetts, conducts biomedical research to improve and sustain warfighter health and performance under all conditions. USARIUM is internationally recognized as the DOD's premier laboratory for warfighter health and performance research and focuses on environmental medicine physiology, physical and cognitive performance, and nutrition research. Graduation Day, the day that every basic training recruit eagerly anticipates. It's a day to celebrate with visiting parents, brothers, sisters, boyfriends, girlfriends, and family. It is here they witness their recruit become a soldier, sailor, airman, marine, and coast guardsman. Thanks to you and your efforts as a member of our command, these warfighters are now a well-trained member of an organization with a proud tradition of defending this country, its citizens, and our Constitution. Because of you, they will also now be entering the warfighter's life cycle better trained and better fit to start a more specialized training with enhanced performance in preparation for deployments. We'll see how our command, the United States Army Medical Research and Material Command, is instrumental in maintaining the warfighter's health during all of these phases preventing, diagnosing, and treating disease and injury, and rehabilitating those that are injured, and ensuring these medical products are strategically, operationally, and tactically distributed throughout our global outreach. This concludes my portion of your orientation. I will now be followed by Dr. Keith Vesley. Dr. Vesley is a retired colonel who served in the Army as a veterinarian, educator, and researcher and is an enormous asset for the Principal Assistant for Research and Technology. Please welcome Dr. Keith Vesley. Thanks, Ray. The medical team helps to ensure force readiness, 
caring for the ill and injured, and enhancing the health of those entrusted to our care. To meet this mission, medical personnel require training above and beyond what they received in basic training. This slide shows some of the advanced training courses available. Through their multiple medical logistics training programs, the MRMC Logistics Commands contribute to the enterprise-wide initiative of educating individuals and units on medical logistics procedures and automation. A favorite course of many is the Medical Management of Chemical and Biological Casualties course that provides familiarization with the management of acute chem-bio warfare injuries in an operational environment. I was a volunteer casualty for several field exercises during my time at MRICD. The fun part of being a casualty was filling your mouth with vegetable soup and waiting for groups of students in full mop gear to gather around you as you began twitching and retching. Our goal was to see how many boots you could get with your soup. MRICD, located at the Edgewood area of Everding Proving Ground, Maryland, is the nation's lead lab for medical chemical defense. MRICD discovers and develops medical countermeasures to chemical warfare agents for U.S. military and citizens. They train and educate personnel in the medical management of chemical casualties, such as a course I already mentioned. Under MRICD is the U.S. Army Center for Environmental Health Research, or USACIR. This relationship is beneficial to both organizations because their missions are closely related. USACIR plans, directs, and conducts research, development, testing, and validation for occupational and environmental health surveillance and environmental health technology in support of forest health protection. USACIR has successfully expanded its capabilities through the recent establishment of the Systems Biology Research Program. USAMRID, located here at Fort Detrick, is DOD's lead lab for medical biological defense. Their research efforts lead to medical solutions such as therapeutics, vaccines, diagnostics, and information that can benefit both military personnel and civilians. Since we cannot ethically or feasibly expose humans to chem-bio warfare agents to conduct studies, the Food and Drug Administration's animal rule allows us to gain approval of a new countermeasure in animals rather than people. Biosurity, or the establishment of systems and procedures to properly safeguard biological select agents and toxins, or BSAT, is very important to USAMRIT as well as the entire nation. Examples of BSAT include anthrax, plague, Ebola, and ricin. Among the threats our forces face are injury from combat operations, exposure to chemical or biological warfare agents, environmental extremes, and endemic disease is not common in the U.S. Providing the warfighter with defenses against these hazards and sustaining their health is the goal of MRMC. Examples of products currently in the hands of the warfighter are shown on the slide and include the Joint Biological Agent Identification and Diagnostic System, or JBAIDS, and the Antidote Treatment Nerve Agent Auto-Injector, or ATNA. JBAIDS is a ruggedized, portable system fielded to all the services, capable of rapidly identifying multiple biological agents and other pathogens of operational concern such as anthrax, plague, and influenza. Development and fielding of JBAIDS was a unique collaborative effort between USAMRID and the Chemical Biological Medical Systems Joint Project Management Office, or CBMS. CBMS, the Advanced Developer of Medical Chem Bio Products for DOD, is also located here at Fort Detrick. The Food and Drug Administration approved ATNA is a two-chambered auto-injector for intramuscular injection of the nerve antidotes atropine and tupam through the same needle. The drugs are administered after the onset of symptoms of nerve agent toxicity. Development of the Aetna requires strong collaboration between MRICD and USAMDA. Not all training is done through courses, and not all of MRMC's products are material items. MRMC has also been instrumental in the development of medical knowledge products, as shown on the slide. These products can exist on paper or in the form of software, but are not acquired in the usual sense of the DOD acquisition process, which you will hear more about later. Nevertheless, they are important products that can be used to disseminate best practices for DOD. Examples include the red, blue, and gold management of chem casualty books, 
which are designed to be carried in the pocket of the Army combat uniforms, and the textbook of military medicine series, which according to my count is now up to 24 volumes. Our collective effort to develop all of these products not only moves military medicine forward, but moves all of medicine forward. In addition to the courses mentioned earlier, the Medical Training and in Health Information Sciences Research Program, or Joint Program Committee 1, and the Telemedicine and Advanced Technology Research Center, or TATRIC, are working together to improve patient safety and quality of care through modeling and simulation based technologies and systems as shown on the slide. The Combat Casualty Training Initiative focuses on advancing pre-hospital combat casualty training with an emphasis on the combat medic, while the Medical Practice Initiative focuses on maintenance of military and medical skills over medical providers' health care career. A tremendous benefit of medical modeling, simulation, and training is its ability to reduce our reliance on live animal training. The Telemedicine and Advanced Technology Research Center, or TATRIC, is located at Fort Detrick and is focused at both ends of the research spectrum, exploring models of high risk and innovative research and putting research findings into the hands of warfighters while looking towards wider civilian utility. TATRIC fosters research in health informatics, mobile health, medical training systems, and computational biology. Prior to any deployment, the warfighter must be prepared at the unit level as well as at the individual level. Deployment readiness requires completion of a set of basic elements for all the services to protect the health of our deploying service members. This includes basic things such as updating your will and ensuring your bills will be paid while on deployment. In addition, assessments such as a required pre-deployment health assessment are designed to provide comprehensive health surveillance for service members affected by deployments and to ensure overall force health protection. The Military Operational Medicine Research Program in RARE, which you heard about earlier, served as consultants during the development of the form. Examples of other products that MRMC was instrumental in developing and fielding and now in the hands of the warfighter about to deploy are shown on the slide and include the Combat Application Tourniquet or CAT. The CAT is a life-saving tool carried by each soldier to stop the bleeding quickly. It was developed using funds from our Combat Casualty Care Research Program as well as Operations and Maintenance or O&M funds. The CAT was expeditiously selected and tested by the U.S. Army Institute of Surgical Research and procured and delivered to each soldier by the U.S. Army Medical Materiel Agency. The U.S. Army Institute of Surgical Research, or ISR, is located at Fort Sam Houston, Texas in the San Antonio Military Medical Center. ISR is the Army's lead lab for combat casualty care medical solutions and products for the injured soldier and works closely with the Combat Casualty Care Research Program here at Fort Detrick. ISR's burn center serves as a sole facility caring for combat burn casualties within the entire Department of Defense. The Joint Trauma System was established within the ISR to improve trauma care delivery and patient outcomes across the entire continuum of care. As part of the Joint Trauma System, the Department of Defense Trauma Registry is a data repository for trauma-related injuries and leads to improved care of wounded warriors through such things as new clinical practice guidelines. I already mentioned the great work that we do for the individual warfighter during pre-deployment. Now let's focus on how we support our units during pre-deployment. MRMC directly supports the readiness of the U.S. Army through life cycle logistics to Army units. Although you will hear more medical logistics details later, I wanted to mention a key organization here at Fort Detrick that is a central focal point for deployment readiness, the U.S. Army Medical Materiel Agency, or USAMA. The U.S. Army Medical Materiel Agency, or USAMA, manages the fielding and technical inspection of medical equipment and supplies. These fieldings bring modernized equipment and material to our units prior to deployment to help ensure they have the most state-of-the-art items to take care of injured or sick warfighters. 
USAMA also manages multiple contingency stock programs to include the Army preposition stock around the world and those stocks linked to our national strategic emergency response plans. USAMA also provides oversight and collaboration on specific materiel projects that are linked to the MRMC acquisition process. In summary, USAMA provides strategic, operational, and even tactical level support to the warfighter. Our next presenter is Ms. Dawn Rosarius, a committed member of the MRMC staff who has worked at this command since 1998. Dawn joined the staff as a biomedical engineer and project manager. She will now talk to you about deployment and the life cycle model. Thank you, Keith. I am honored to address this part of the warfighter's experience. MRMC ensures warfighters are prepared physically and mentally for deployments in all environments, from desert heat to snowy mountains to the rainforest, from humanitarian assistance to combat missions. The warfighter is trained and ready for deployments. MRMC has been and continues to be heavily involved in making sure our warfighters have the protective equipment and supplies they need. The Military Infectious Disease Research Program, Walter Reed Army Institute of Research, or RARE, and the U.S. Army Medical Material Development Activity, USAMDA, develop bed nets used in areas with a heavy population of insects to make sure our warfighters are protected from disease-carrying vectors. Working with our combat developer, experts from the U.S. Army Institute of Surgical Research, or ISR, U.S. Army Medical Material Development Activity, and USAMA work together to select the best commercially available items for the individual first aid kit shown here, which is now worn by each soldier and has essential medical items such as the CAT or combat application tourniquet you heard about earlier and life-saving bandages. The Military Operational Medicine Research Program, using Congressional Special Interest Funds, assisted the U.S. Army Institute of Environmental Medicine, or USARIUM, in conducting nutrition research to determine the impact and effects of the types of food and calorie intake on the soldiers. And we continue to be on the forefront of research in providing better protection with our combat casualty care and military operational medicine research programs via the work at RARE for fatigue, sleep, and traumatic brain injury. Like the protection to our individual soldiers and warfighters, MRMC also provides solutions for military units as a whole. The Military Operational Medicine Research Program and the U.S. Army Center for Environmental Health Research, or USACIR, with USAMA are developing the coliform analyzer, a tool to make sure that our soldiers' drinking water is safe from coliform bacteria and E. coli. The MRMC has also been essential in developing and determining the best medical evacuation and care solutions, including telemedicine, for both ground and air ambulances. At the U.S. Army Air Medical Research Lab, USAMA, USAMDA, and the Telemedicine and Advanced Technology Research Center, or TATRIC. Now, how do you fit into this process and this great organization of MRMC? From research and development, to development and acquisition, to acquisition and logistics, all are important to DOD's and Army Medicine's life cycle management process. The first area of the life cycle management process is research and technology. This typically encompasses research of knowledge or material solutions in the discovery phase through the technology development phase of the life cycle. This area is led by Dr. Fraser Glenn, our Principal Assistant for Research and Technology, and funds are managed by our research programs. Those noted include Military Infectious Disease Research Program to our newest area, the Medical Training and Health Information Sciences. As shown for each is RAD, R-A-D, or JPC. The RAD, or Research Area Directorate, 
manages the Army funds, and typically under the same manager, the JPC, or Joint Program Committee, which is a multi-service team, manages the Defense Health Program, or DHP, funds. Both Army and DHP intramural programs are executed by our laboratories noted there. And extramural programs are typically managed by our execution management agencies of the Congressionally Directed Medical Research Program, or CDMRP, and TATRIC. The next area of the life cycle was acquisition. This is typically what the DOD calls management of programs of record. and starts at milestone B through production and deployment. The managers, or PMs, ensure products are properly FDA cleared, manufactured, sustainable, and prepared for the environment. This area is led by Dr. Kenneth Bertram, our Principal Assistant for Acquisition. Execution is performed by our project managers, from the pharmaceutical PM to the HIV project manager, who all work at USAMA, USAMDA, or RARE. Army dollars are managed by the project managers, and DHP dollars are managed by the Joint Program Committee chairs in coordination with the PMs. When products are ready for fielding, we then hand our products off to our logisticians. The final area of the life cycle is logistics, where we procure, assemble, field, maintain, and sustain our equipment and sets, kits, and outfits developed for our deploying units and warfighters. This area is led by Mr. David Williams, our Deputy for Materiel. Executing this mission is our logistics organizations of USAMA, the U.S. Army Medical Material Center Europe, USAMC, the U.S. Army Medical Material Center Korea, USAMC-K, and the 6th Medical Logistics Management Center. Throughout the life cycle management process, USA MRMC headquarters also has a significant role in helping you be successful. As a subordinate command to the U.S. Army Medical Command, or MEDCOM, we receive taskers and assistance as well, and we handle a full 80% of those tasks without pulling you away from your research, development, acquisition, or sustainment missions. We defend your money and manpower constantly, and along with your leaders, we plan strategically and speak for the entire command, so there is one voice, one mission, and one vision. As mentioned earlier, we are a unique organization and a full life cycle manager. We have two life cycles within the full life cycle, product development and product sustainment. Both support the other and are essential for us to develop, procure, and sustain products for our warfighters. Not all of our products, however, are developed by MRMC. In fact, 95% of the products we send to the field are commercially available. As a result, it is very important that we do that market research early in the process, determine what's available commercially, and those things that are not available commercially, we then must engage in the product development lifecycle. At this time, it is my pleasure to welcome Colonel Mark Dole, a soldier who has been downrange and knows firsthand the challenges of working in a hostile environment. Colonel Dole will now walk you through how MRMC continues to develop solutions to support our warfighters during challenging deployments. The Army Medical Department sustains the fighting force. The Army Medical Department also inspires the American warfighter instilling confidence when they face dangers because they know they will receive the best possible protection and care. The medical material and medical knowledge delivered by MRMC has been essential to the positive medical outcomes. In Iraq and Afghanistan, the military health system has achieved the highest rate of survival with the lowest medical footprint of any conflict. 90% of total casualties have survived. Let's follow the wounded soldier in this scenario through the evacuation process. Prior to the injury, the soldier has received the best possible equipment and training, efforts seeking to prevent or mitigate injury. Immediately upon injury, the soldier receives care from their battle buddy, from the soldiers in their squad trained in the Combat Lifesaver Program, and from the medics integrated into the unit. You can imagine his buddy opening the improved first aid kit, the IFAC, strapped to the soldier's vest, or in a traumatic injury, utilizing the Combat Application Tourniquet to a severed limb. At that moment, it is all reaction and hazy action. 
adding to the soldier's strength in that moment are the very deliberate and technical processes from MRMC's activities. Illustrating this point, the Joint Trauma Analysis and Prevention of Injury in Combat to TEPIC provides data, analysis, and recommendations to improve design to military equipment. JTAPIC collects and analyzes intelligence and clinical injury data in order to provide actionable information to the appropriate program executive office. In this way, MRMC influences the proper design and life support systems for vehicles and equipment. JTAPIC has impacted design changes to helmets, armor, vehicle, and clothing, and changes to tactics, techniques, and procedures. The photos on this slide illustrate vehicle design changes, a very relevant example to the video of the IED blast. The experience of the wounded soldier continues as the nine-line call for medevac brings in medical evacuation assets. The material and knowledge delivered by MRMC continues to be an essential element to the care. The noise immune stethoscope, medevac telemedicine, and the portable oxygen generator are illustrated in these photos. The U.S. Army Air Medical Research Laboratory, USRL, located at Fort Rucker, Alabama, the home of Army Aviation, provided the research, testing, and knowledge products that made those innovations possible. The USRL's mission is to preserve and enhance the health, safety, combat effectiveness, and survivability of the U.S. Army aviator and the soldier. Ultimately, USRL reduces the health hazards and improves human performance on Army aviation platforms and vehicles. Their effort ensures the soldier's safety, health, and optimal human performance, which should be built into all our systems. These are specialized examples of technology solutions. Consider that as a life cycle manager for all Class 8 medical material, MRMC manages and delivers all medical products. Healthcare starts with medical logistics. Life cycle management included three parts, research and technology, acquisition, and logistics. It is in the logistics that MRMC provides direct support to the military units. In 2009, the MRMC commander was designated by the Army Surgeon General as the senior leader champion for the Army Medical Logistics Enterprise. This reinforced MRMC's role as the life cycle manager for Class 8 material and expanded MRMC's role and responsibility to influence the entire Army medical logistics enterprise. First, MRMC executes medical logistics functions through organic medical logistics commands that provide robust and unique capabilities. Second, MRMC develops and synchronizes medical logistics concepts of operations and strategic goals across all Army activities MRMC has specific leadership responsibility in supply, equipment, maintenance, and assembly life cycle management. The U.S. Army Medical Materials Center, Korea, is a logistics command in MRMC located at Camp Carroll near the city of Daegu, South Korea. It is the theater lead agent for medical material, the TLAM, providing medical logistics support to U.S. Forces Korea and organizations located in the Korean theater. USAMSIKE. A MRMC unit partners with Korean civilian employees, Republic of Korea Army, and the U.S. Army 563rd Medical Logistics Company to provide the full range of medical logistics support. Their vision includes fight and win tonight. The U.S. Army Medical Material Center Europe, USAMC, located in Permisens, Germany, is a theater lead agent for medical material providing medical logistics support, medical management, distribution, maintenance, and services to over 900 joint and interagency customers in UCOM and AFRICOM, and essential support to CENTCOM. Always responsive, USAMC has a history dating back to 1951, 
providing medical depot operations in Europe. USAMSI provides operational and strategic capabilities that support contingency and humanitarian missions across continents. The 6th Medical Logistics Management Center is a deployable forces command unit under the administrative control of MRMC. The 6th MLMC provides strategic medical logistics resources to plan and execute expeditionary centralized medical material management, a unique capability that has proven invaluable during expeditionary missions such as theater openings and disaster relief operations such as the relief mission in Haiti and Hurricane Sandy. The 6th MOMC provides two deployable teams. These teams have been on constant deployed rotations to Camp Osalea, Qatar throughout the Operations Iraqi Freedom and Operation Enduring Freedom, continuing in Operation New Dawn. In Qatar, the 6th MOMC provides leadership to the U.S. Army Medical Material Center Southwest Asia, USAMSWA, which acts as the TLAM for Central Command, providing direct logistics support to hundreds of joint and interagency customers. MRMC provides the full range of logistics support as part of the complete life cycle management of medical material. I will be followed by Lieutenant Colonel Fobbs as MRMC continues to impact the soldier's experience after deployment. I'm Lieutenant Colonel Bernadette Bobbs. Increasing numbers of service members are surviving with extreme trauma to the extremities and head due to advances in trauma care. The Clinical and Rehabilitative Medicine Research Program seeks more effective ways to treat wounded soldiers. The wounds of battle are often hidden. Close calls and seeing buddies killed in action are traumatic. No one is immune. The Military Operational Medicine Research Program supports the ongoing research and development plan of Walter Reed Army Institute of Research for post-traumatic stress and other psychological health issues that impact our warriors. Their goal is to develop better, standardized clinical practice guidelines that can be provided to the Defense Centers of Excellence and implemented throughout our military treatment facilities. Military Operational Medicine Research Program, as well as RARE, develops and manages resilience training programs, such as BattleMind, that offers strength-based positive psychology tools to aid soldiers, leaders, and families who must face the daily challenges of military life. The information provided within this training is targeted to all phases of a soldier's deployment cycle, life cycle, and support system. Here is an early example of a product used to assist warriors returning from deployment. Welcome to the Battle Mind Training. My name is Lieutenant Colonel Carl Castro. I'd like to thank you for your service and for participating in this training. This training consists of four scenarios followed by a discussion and lessons learned for each. Battle Mind is the soldier's inner strength to face fear and adversity in combat with courage. BattleMind training focuses on building on your proven strengths. BattleMind consists of two critical components, self-confidence and mental toughness. BattleMind training helps you maximize the BattleMind skills you demonstrated in combat so that you can use these skills effectively as you continue your transition home. The Army places a strong focus on cognitive assessment for its service members. As follow-on to the pre-deployment health assessment discussed earlier, the Army requires deployed military and civilian personnel to complete a post-deployment health assessment immediately after returning to home station and post-deployment health assessment 90 to 180 days following return. The assessments are designed to identify and address health concerns with specific emphasis on mental health that have emerged since deployment. We have discussed how MRMC takes care of the warfighter in the field. 
but just as important is to see how MRMC supports the family of our warfighters. A particular note is resilience training and suicide prevention training. Many programs are of interest to Congress. As we mentioned earlier, Congressional Special Interest Funding has assisted in keeping cancer research moving forward. The nation recognizes MRMC's capability to manage extremely high budget research programs. In the 20 years since MRMC received its first breast cancer money, CDMRP has received over 100 different CSI appropriations for other diseases to include ovarian and lung cancer, psychological health, traumatic brain injury, as well as orthopedic and spinal cord injury. CDMRP manages congressional and special interest funded medical research programs in areas directed by Congress. In recent years, CDMRP has become an execution manager for the Joint Program Committee's core programs, another of our organizations that has national and international reach. The Armed Forces Medical Examiner System, the National Museum of Health and Medicine, and the Defense Center of Excellence for Psychological Health and Traumatic Brain Injury are MRMC's newest executive agency. The Armed Forces Medical Examiner System provides comprehensive services in forensic pathology, forensic toxicology, DNA technology and identification, and mortality surveillance for the Department of Defense. A tri-service organization, the AFMES is the only medical examiner operation at the federal level and is an executive agency. They are responsible for determining cause and manner of death in all cases of suspicious or unnatural death for U.S. service members and persons of interest to the U.S. government. The National Museum of Health and Medicine has case studies and records about disease, injury treatment, and health care in the military since 1862. This includes vaccine research and trials, brain surgery, and artificial organs. The museum's long history allows for a vast collection of materials used for ongoing research and development. It also serves as a repository for current products and technologies. The museum also provides a welcoming and comfortable space for soldiers and their families to discuss topics related to traumatic brain injury and post-traumatic stress disorder. The stress-free environment of the museum reflects the care and concern shown for our warriors and the medical innovations developed to care for our military. We all understand that the health of our warriors does not stop once the soldier leaves active duty. Located in Crystal City, Virginia, the Defense Center of Excellence for Psychological Health and Traumatic Brain Injury is MRMC's newest executive agency. Established in 2007, the mission of the DECO is to improve the lives of our nation's service members, families, and veterans by advancing excellence in PH and TBI prevention and care. Recent accomplishments of the DECO include the development and deployment of mobile apps for patients and providers and substance use disorder and major depressive disorder kits. The Department of Defense and the Department of Veterans Affairs provide health care and benefits to the same population at different times in their lives. For this reason, it is critical that DOD and VA share data, resources, and coordinate and collaborate on medical care and medical research initiatives. MRMC works with VA on many clinical trials and consortia studies focusing on regenerative medicine, traumatic brain injury, post-traumatic stress, and the Millennium Cohort Study, which examines the health-related effects of deployment on military personnel and veterans. This overview only scrapes the surface of the service, support, and products MRMC develops and distributes to make sure our warriors stay Army strong, aim high, and are always faithful from initial entry to retirement and beyond. We invite you to look through the USA MRMC Handbook located at the webpage on your slide deck. You'll find more information in the handbook and discover where you can make the best contribution to our mission and our vision. We look forward to meeting with you from time to time, and if you see one of us walking around, stop and let's talk. Remember, as a member of this team, we want you to be responsive, we want you to be responsible, and we want you to engender trust, not only among your colleagues, but all of the partnerships we have throughout the globe.
Everyone who works at USAM RMC is an important part of the Army and important to the soldiers. The soldier on point never stands alone. The soldier in war never stands alone. We are there with our medical solutions. We are there at the first sign of trouble. We are there when the medevac arrives. We are there when the wounded need help. We are there to diagnose the sick and injured. We are there with equipment and supplies. We are there, so the soldier never stands alone.